Welcome to Brightly Storytime. I'm Mary Pope Osborne, author of the Magic Treehouse series. This is the new deluxe illustrated edition of the very first book in the series, Dinosaurs Before Dark. I'm excited to share some of my favorite parts from the book, and then I'll answer some questions I get about the series. We pick up with chapter six, where Jack and Annie find themselves in the time of dinosaurs. They were taken there by the magic treehouse for the very first time. They didn't know a treehouse could take them through time. They go back to the Cretaceous period, and now they're having their adventure with dinosaurs. Dinosaur Valley. Annie, look at this, Jack called. Look what I found. Annie had gone up to the hilltop. She was picking a flower from the magnolia tree. Annie, look, a medallion, shouted Jack. But Annie wasn't paying attention to Jack. She was staring at something on the other side of the hill. Oh, wow, she said. Clutching her magnolia flower, she took off down the hill. Annie, come back, Jack shouted. But Annie had disappeared. Oh, brother, Jack muttered. He stuffed the gold medallion into his jeans pocket. Then Jack heard Annie shriek. Annie, he said. Jack heard another sound as well, a deep bellowing sound, like a tuba. Jack, come here quick, Annie called. Jack raced up the hill. When he got to the top, he gasped. The valley below was filled with nests, big nests made out of mud. The nests were filled with tiny dinosaurs. Annie was crouching next to one of the nests. Towering over her was a gigantic duckbill dinosaur. Don't panic. Don't move, said Jack. He stepped slowly down the hill toward Annie. The huge dinosaur was waving her arms and making her tuba sound. Jack stopped. He didn't want to get too close. He knelt on the ground. Okay, move toward me. Slowly, he said. Annie started to stand up. Don't stand, crawl, said Jack. Clutching her flower, Annie crawled toward Jack. Still bellowing, the duckbill's dinosaur followed her. Annie froze. Keep going, Jack said. Annie started crawling again. Jack inched forward, down the hill, until he was just at arm's length from Annie. He reached out and grabbed her hand. He pulled Annie toward him. Stay down, Jack said. He crouched next to her. Bow your head, pretend to chew. Chew, said Annie. Yes, said Jack. I read that's what you do if a mean dog comes at you. She's no dog, Jack, said Annie. Just chew, said Jack. Jack and Annie both bowed their heads and pretended to chew. Soon the dinosaur grew quiet. Jack looked up. I don't think she's mad anymore, he said. You saved me, Annie said, thanks. You have to use your brain, Annie, said Jack. You can't just go running to a nest of babies. There's always a mother nearby. Annie stood up. Annie, don't, said Jack. Too late. Annie held out her magnolia flower to the dinosaur. I'm sorry I made you worry about your babies, she said. The dinosaur moved closer to Annie. She grabbed the flower from her hand. She reached for another. No more, said Annie. The dinosaur let out a sad tuba sound. But there are more flowers up there, Annie said. She pointed to the top of the hill. I'll get you some. Annie hurried up the hill. The dinosaur waddled after her. Jack quickly looked at the dinosaur babies. Some were crawling out of their nests. Where are the other mothers, Jack wondered. Jack took out the dinosaur book. He flipped through the pages. He found a picture of some duckbill dinosaurs. He read the caption. The Anatosauruses lived in colonies. While a few mothers babysat the nests, others looked for food. So there were probably more mothers close by looking for food. Hey, Jack, Annie called. Jack looked up. Annie was at the top of the hill, feeding magnolia flowers to the giant Anatosaurus. Guess what, Annie said. She's nice too. Suddenly, the Anatosaurus made her terrible tuba sound. Annie crouched down and started to chew. The dinosaur charged down the hill. She seemed afraid of something. Jack put the book on top of his pack. He hurried to Annie. I wonder why she ran away, said Annie. 
We were starting to be friends. Jack looked around. What he saw in the distance almost made him faint. An enormous monster was coming across the plain. The monster was walking on two strong legs. It was swinging a long, thick tail and dangling two tiny arms. It had a huge head and its jaws were wide open. Even from far away, Jack could see its long, gleaming teeth. Tyrannosaurus Rex, said Jack. Chapter 7, Ready, Set, Go. Run, Annie, run, cried Jack. Run to the treehouse. Jack and Annie dashed down the hill together. They ran through the tall grass and ferns and past the pteranodon. They scrambled up the rope ladder and tumbled into the treehouse. Annie leaped to the window. It's going away, she said, panting. Jack pushed his glasses into place. He looked out the window with Annie. The Tyrannosaurus was wandering off. But then the monster stopped and turned around. Duck, said Jack. The two of them ducked their heads. After a long moment, they peeked out the window again. Coast clear, said Jack. Yay, whispered Annie. We have to get out of here, said Jack. You made a wish before, said Annie. Right, said Jack. He took a deep breath. I wish we could go back to Frog Creek. Nothing happened. I said, I wish, started Jack. Wait, said Annie, you were looking at a picture in the dinosaur book, remember? Oh no, I left the book in my pack on the hill, said Jack. I have to go back. Forget it, said Annie. I can't, said Jack. The book doesn't belong to us. Plus my notebook with all my notes is in my pack and my... Okay, okay, said Annie. I'll hurry, said Jack. He climbed quickly down the ladder and leaped to the ground. He raced past the pteranodon, through the ferns, through the tall grass and up the hill. He looked down. His pack was lying on the ground and on top of it was the dinosaur book. But now the valley below was filled with anatosauruses. They were all standing guard around their nests. Where had they been? Did fear the Tyrannosaurus send them home? Jack took a deep breath. Ready, set, go, he thought. He charged down the hill. He ran to his backpack. He scooped it up. He grabbed the dinosaur book. Jack heard a terrible tuba sound, then another and another. All the anatosauruses were bellowing at him. Jack took off. He raced up the hilltop. He started down the hill. He stopped. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was back. It was standing between Jack and the treehouse. I can't believe I've been writing the adventures of Jack and Annie now for almost 30 years. And one of my favorite things about being an author is meeting the readers around the world. Everyone has always been so amazing and I get lots of great questions. I'm gonna share with you a couple of questions right now the sort of that I get very often. What's the best part of being an author? The very best part is using my imagination and being able to go any place, any time and take hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of readers with me. It's a great adventure and I can't wait to start writing every day to have that adventure. And I hope that you share it with me when you read one of the Magic Treehouse books and that you actually feel like you're going on an adventure with Jack and Annie. How do you make a book? When I make a book, it's the writing part and then there's the illustration part and then there's the production part and everybody brings it together and there's the marketing and there's the selling and there's the bookseller. So a lot of people go into making a book. But my part is really fun, as I said, and that involves doing a lot of research and taking a lot of notes and making an outline and then writing the story and then rewriting the story, and then rewriting the story, and rewriting the story, and rewriting the story. That's a huge part of my writing a book, is to rewrite, get good information from my editor, from my husband, from who's ever my best readers, and then start to change things and make them better. So it's really a team effort. That's how you make a book. I can't tell you how much fun the whole process is, and it's been wonderful 
being with you today and reading to you. And I hope that you will be a fan, a new fan, an old fan, and that you will maybe share the Dinosaurs Before Dark new version, new illustrated full color version with your favorite reader. If that's your little sister or your mother, please enjoy. Thank you so much.